Hi, I'm Rita Peterson with Everything Homemade, and these are my wonderful children and my helpers. Um, today we have Ocean, who is seven, oh, Grace, who is four, and Attica, you want to look at the camera? And Attica, who is two. We are going to make jam. Now, I'm going to just make a real simple jam because we are making chocolate cake and I'm going to use this jam on their toast tomorrow morning. I am also going to use this jam as a filling in between two chocolate layers. So I'm going to have this film as one for, for jam and then I'm also going to use it in my chocolate cake. How's that sound? Tonight for company tonight. So very basic. First of all, to make jam, um, honestly, in the middle of winter here, I just go down in my basement and I find in the freezer what kind of fruit I have. So if we take a look over here, I got some strawberries, frozen strawberries out. I have some mango here. I have um, some cranberries. I have some raisins. Okay, but in all honesty, you can put chopped up apples in it. You could put shredded coconut in it. You could put berries in it. I mean, you put peaches. What, whatever you have, have, have. Rhubarb will be an awesome. And the reason why I'm not using rhubarb right now is because I have cranberries this time. And these are fairly acidic. And so I'm going to just skip the rhubarb to this time. But if I didn't have cranberries, this would be full of rhubarb. Um, so I'm going to make this um, particular kind of jam we're going to throw it together and remember you can do this with any kind of fruit so practice um, experiment a little bit but I'll show you how I how, the, how I do the base okay so Attica here needs something to stir don't you so Ocean is going to literally just start pouring thing in so raisins I got two cups of raisins here now I use raisins because it's a natural sweetener and it just sweetens and thickens a bit my mixture. And we got four cups of mango. Oh, beautiful. Love that. And then we have uh, eight cups of whole cranberries. Dump that in. Oh, yeah. Look at that pot full. And then we have um, strawberries. strawberries. Now, this would probably end up being maybe two cups if they were thawed. So these are whole, and you'll notice, yeah, just be careful here. Now you'll notice how full this pot is. Okay, be careful now, Annika. That's okay, because once these start to heat up and thaw, everything's going to squish down to about here. So that's no big deal. Yep, yeah, plop it in. Here you go. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is add a cup of water, and this cup is basically to get this going and that's all I want because when everything's going to steam and heat all the waters all the water that's in all the fruit is going to come out and create enough juice that's just enough to get it going so that it doesn't burn the bottom and that is all we're going to I'm going to halfway through the cooking process I'll add a little bit more but this is start we just dump everything in okay Annika if we would have had apple, by the way, we would have chopped up the apple. Yeah. Anyway, she likes eating cranberries. So let's go over to the stove here. And, uh, Ocean, you want to grab me that, that lid over there for the pot? Sure. So we're going to go to the stove here. And we're going to put it on, um, first of all, at five here, which is a high, uh, medium heat. Um... And, and we're, we're going to do is we're just going to heat up this pot. And it might take at least 15, 20 minutes to heat up, but that's okay. And I'm going to check on it. And I want a nice simmer to really thaw all this fruit out. Um, because I just figured just about a half an hour ago, we'll make some, some jam and some filling. So I'm starting from frozen. So it's going to thaw and make sure you're not going to burn the bottom. And then we're going to look at it here. And I'm going to show you when it's... Um, more condensed and and cooked we'll add some more spices to it so let's just see what happens within about uh, 25 minutes 25 minutes later and i have turned down the heat to um low and look at that 
Oh, the color. Look at that red with the yellow and the mango. It's just absolutely beautiful. You'll notice how much liquid I have here. Um, that's okay. And and look how much um, it has uh, come down. So now this pot doesn't look so crazy full anymore. So I'm going to keep it simmering here because if you look at my cranberries, they're still quite whole. And they're not that soft. So we just, um, everything is just thawed. So what we're going to do is keep it at this temperature. And you can see it um, nicely simmering there. Beautiful. And I'm going to just place uh, a little bit of ginger um, powder in it. And, uh, and just to give it a little bit of a zip. Um, to it and ginger goes really really good with all of these and just about a teaspoon of ground ginger will uh, just make it make it pop just like that and you can at this point too you could have added some orange zest to this would work you can even make it lemon flavored I just don't have any oranges in the house so I'm going to add just a little bit of ginger to my pot at the very end, um, I will taste this and see if it needs a little honey added to it. Bef but I don't want to do that right now. I want everything to cook together. And then at the end, I will sweeten this if I need to. So we're going to let this simmer probably for another half an hour. And then check it again and uh, put the final touches to it. Okay, so we're about um, another... 15 20 minutes later and you can see how much this has reduced this is looking awesome and what I'm going to do is I'm going to keep the lid off now and I am just going to let it simmer a little bit longer for about another 10 minutes so the wa any extra water evaporates which will give me a nice thick jam and at this point I also test it And it might, it doesn't even taste um, like I need to add any sugar at all. So this is, there will be no sugar added. Those raisins and the strawberries and the mango really offset that bitter um, flavor of the cranberries. This is absolutely just smells. I wish you could smell it, you guys, how much. Um, this is so awesome. But... We're going to just let it simmer again. I'm on really low heat. I'm going to stir it about every 15, 20 seconds so it doesn't burn the bottom. And, and just let it um, evaporate a bit. And then um, we'll do the, the last step here. So now it is all done. I've just taken it off the hot plate. And what I'm going to do now is it's a little bit um, clumpy. So I want it a little bit smooth. Now I don't want it, um, I want it kind of like a smoother chutney. I don't want it perfectly smooth. Um, so that's, uh, so I'm going to take a hand wand right here and I'm going to use this um, to uh, get a nice smoother. <laughs> So look at that, and we got a wonderful jam, absolutely wonderful jam, and it's going to thicken once it cools because it's still really warm. So we're going to let this cool off, and the kids will love this on their, their toast, and you look how much it made. We'll have enough to do our cake inside, and we'll have enough for like two or three weeks on our toast with my five kids. That'll be awesome. So we'll let this cool, and there you go. Homemade jam, easy as ever. Thank you so much for watching.